Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bits of Good Bootcamp. I am Ben, react.usestate, Holmes. And in this video, I just wanted to go over a little bit about what state management is and why you might need to use it in your app. So in front of me right now is uh, the activity from last time, just the simple uh, warm-up activity on a pumpkin recipe. And uh, I've added one little thing um, to this section of ingredients or this ingredients component that we're looking at here. Um, along with this uh, list and this header, I've also added this button on the side of here, um, this collapse button. And what we're going to try to do here is um, actually add some functionality to our ingredients section that allow us to sort of collapse the list and expand it back out. Sort of like those drop down menus that you've seen before, where you have a bunch of sections on a website and you want to just hide um, certain pieces of content inside of the header and then you click on the collapse button um, in order to bring it back up. Um, just one of those little like drop down menus to just show and hide this. So um, I have a basic setup here. I have the button in place and I also have our list of items here. So what we want to do is actually add a way in order to show and hide this list of elements whenever we click on this button. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an event listener in here, which thankfully in React is very easy to do. So to start us off, all we have to do is uh, just say whenever you click this button, I want you to fire this function that I'm about to write. And I'm going to write it inside of our ingredients component here. Uh, and I'm going to call this button um, show, or, or uh, how about toggle um, ingredients? Toggle ingredients. Either show it or hide it, depending. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, uh, and it's giving me an error saying that uh, function doesn't exist. It's going to change the map. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, remove this implicit return thing I have going on. And I'm going to return it um, explicitly outside of that box. So um, this is an error that you commonly make where you want to use your uh, curly braces instead of your parentheses. Um, so what we're doing here is when you use uh, regular parentheses, it's just going to return everything inside of those parentheses from that function. But if you put curly braces, you actually have to say the word return before you actually return anything. And that's what I'm going to do here because I want to write some code before I return the HTML. And the code that I'm going to write is creating this toggle ingredients function. So I'm going to create our toggle ingredients here. It's going to be a basic arrow function. It doesn't take anything in. And uh, all I want to do is change a uh, variable that I'm going to keep track of for whether or not it's open. So uh, for that, I'm also going to create a variable outside of this function that just says, um, how about uh, ingredients opened? All right. And it's open by default. We want to see them by default. So we're going to say it's true. Um, to start out. And whenever we toggle ingredients, we want to change ingredients opened um, to its opposite. So for that, I'm going to, well, if you want to like, if it's true, you would set it to false whenever you hit toggle. Um, but we also want it to set it back to true if it was previously false. So in order to do that, we're actually going to say ingredients opened is equal to the opposite of what it is right now. So if it's true to start, when we hit this button, we should set it to false, hit it again, set it back to true, and so on. And I'm going to console log that in order to show you guys that that's working correctly. Um, so it should auto save over here. Um, and inside of our console, um, we don't see anything printing right now, but when we hit collapse, we should see that variable gets set to false, and then it gets set to true, false, true, stuff like that. Um, so now we have our variable in order to keep track of whether or not our menu is opened. Um, so all we have to do is actually show and hide it. Uh, depending on uh, which state that we're currently in. So uh, for that, I'm actually going to apply CSS depending on the value of the variable. And this is kind of a tricky thing, especially if you're not familiar with this ternary operator syntax. Um, so basically, it's going to be like an ifs-else statement, um, if you're familiar with that, where um, we can pass it the uh, variable that we have right now, this ingredients opened boolean, this variable. Um, and I'm going to say, if it's open, um, or is it open? Um, <laughs> the basic what the question mark means. Is it open right now? And if so, I want to uh, apply a CSS class that says it's open. And otherwise, or else, I want to set it to closed. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm basically applying a CSS class depending on a variable. So when it, this is true, um, UL will have a class of open. And when it's false, it will have a class of closed. And I'm going to demo that here. Um, first, I'm just going to uh, create our styles um, for both of those. And uh, you can ignore some of the styles I have in here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and create an open class 
which will just set its display property to visible in order to say that it exists. Um, and that, that's actually kind of redundant, but we're going to leave it um, just for like utmost clarity. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, set it to closed. That's the other style. And when it's closed, we want its display to be none. AK, we don't want that element to display when it's closed. Um, so now we have that set up. We have our CSS to apply, and we have our logic to apply either the open class, in which case it will be display visible, or apply the closed class, in which case it will be display none. Um, so I'm going to sort of say like the opposite right now in order to show you that that's working. So when it's false, it's setting it to closed. And when it's true, it's setting that CSS back to open. So that's working fine. Um, but one thing that we would expect now that we have this in place is uh, when this guy gets it to false, when I click this button, it's going to uh, change that CSS for us. So I'm going to click the button here. And uh, you'll notice that in the console, everything's working fine. There's nothing wrong here. But you notice that nothing on the page actually changes. And this is because of how React handles rendering. Um, so if we go back um, to something that we went over previously a little bit, but haven't discussed a whole lot, this is at the bottom of our activity, um, we call render every time we want our uh, page to, or every time we want to add some HTML to our page from JavaScript. Um, so in this case, we render once, only once, and uh, we pass it our app and our ingredients component. Um, and that's the only time we actually render, the only time that we say, hey, I have some, uh, some HTML that I want to put on the page. So that means um, whenever we change something in our JavaScript, whenever we change the value of this variable, it's not calling render again. So it's actually not going to render or show um, the new stuff that we want to show on our page. In this case, the new uh, versions of ingredients, it's going to be the same thing, but we want this class to be applied. We want our closed class to be applied. And uh, that's not going to happen unless we call the render function every time we click on our button. Um, so that's one option that we have. But of course, that's, uh, that's kind of weird, right? Because our render is happening in our app component. Um, and calling that same render function from here uh, isn't really possible unless we pass some stuff around and get a little uh, fancy with things. So uh, React has thought about this. Um, and it uses something called state management to basically keep track of variables that are going to cause the page to change in some way. In this case, our ingredients open page is going to cause our page to change because we're changing um, what's showing and what isn't. So because of that, we have to keep track of um, whether or not that variable has been changed and then render again whenever it changes. Um, and in order to do that, we use something called react.useState. Um, so we've imported React at the top here, so we can actually access this function. Uh, and I'm just going to write the whole thing out, and you'll probably be confused seeing the syntax, so I'm just going to explain it um, step by step. So I'm going to remove our current declaration variable, because we actually create this variable in a different way now that we're using state. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable, and then array, <laughs> destructuring array, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, we're going to uh, say the name of the variable. In this case, ingredients open is what we want to call the variable. And then I also want to create a function that every time I call this function, it basically is telling React, hey, this variable changed to something else, and I want you to reload the page. So I'm going to call that function whatever I want. It can be any name you want. And I'm going to call it um, uh, open ingredients, or toggle, actually, toggle ingredients like so. And I'm going to set that array equal to, yes, we're using an array on the left side here. It's very weird. Um, we're going to say react.useState. And then what we pass into this is going to be the initial value for our variable. So if we remember, we said let ingredients open equal true. So we want to set it to true um, to start. And uh, we're going to uh, just end that there, pass it as a parameter into this useState function. And um, just to break down what's going on here, the main weird thing that you're probably scratching your head over is, why are we using this array syntax over here? And uh, that's using something, uh, it's a fancy tool in JavaScript called array destructuring, where in essence, you are uh, taking values at an array and assigning them to variables. So to break that down a little bit more clearly, I'm going to just uh, create like a dummy array here, just an example of uh, three elements. So I'm going to call it fruits, all right? And inside of this, I'm going to put three strings, um, each representing a fruit, um, just as an example. 
And say I want to get the first value of the array and assign it to a variable. So say I want to get um, the apple string out of the array. I'm going to set that equal to fruits at zero, right? I'm going to get the first element of that array and plop it into my variable. Similarly, if I want to get the banana, um, keep typing that wrong. Uh, I'm going to get the fruits at one and so on and so forth. That's just the way that you can index into array and get stuff out. Shouldn't be too unfamiliar to you. Um, but there's actually a shortcut in order to uh, get things as specific indexes from the start to the end. And that's using something called array destructuring. So the way that we can do that, um, in this case, if we want to create our same apple string and banana string and set apple string to the value of this and banana string to the value of this, we can actually use array syntax when we're creating our variable and then we can say what those variable names should be called. So in this case, I'm going to say apple string banana string is equal to fruits. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, out of the fruits array, I want to get the first element and put it at the first element in this array. And I want to get the second element and put it at the second element in this array. So it's going to go, basically, it's going to go through fruits. It's going to look from the start to the end, and it's going to assign each value to each variable that I'm specifying. Again, it's going to take a little time and a little practice in order to like sort of see the utility of this or get comfortable with it. But we're basically saying um, just a one-to-one -one pairing here. I want this value in this array to equal this value, and I want this value in this array to equal this value. And whenever I log these variables, they're just normal variables. It, so if I were to log apple string, um, it's just going to be equal to fruits at zero. And if we look at that, yeah, apple. Uh, if I get banana string, it's going to be equal to the array at one, and so on and so forth. So in the end, basically all you have to remember is that this is the same thing as this, um, and banana string, same way. So saying this explicitly, these two lines, is the same thing as just saying this one line. And we could keep going through the array and create like an orange string for the value at two, or um, kiwi string for the value at uh, three, if we were to create like a kiwi element here, we would have to add in another variable and we would call that kiwi string and so on and so forth. Um, and if we print that out, we should see the array at the fourth value because it is the fourth element inside of this sort of destructuring that we're doing. Um, so that's exactly what's going on with react.useState, where what it's returning is actually an array with two values. It's returning uh, the variable um, that we want to create, that we want to create a state out of, and then a function that we call whenever we want to change the value of that variable. So we actually have to uh, call a function in order to change the value of ingredients opened. So uh, just for clarity's sake, I can also write it like so. Um, yeah, is equal to uh, react. Dot, well, I can. I, I would actually have to create a reference to the variable, so I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to say state is equal to react.useState true. Um, and then I can go ahead and say ingredients opened, and I'm just going to remove this. I can say ingredients opened is equal to state at the first element of the array. And I can say toggle, uh, toggle function to be totally obvious about what's going on. It's equal to the state at one. Um, so if I were to log state, you can actually check out what it's doing. Um, so it's creating uh, an array of two values where the first one is the value of our uh, state variable, and the other one is a function that we can call in order to change this value to something else. Um, and then I'm just setting each of those to their own variable, and we can also use array destructuring as previously explained in order to do that. Um, so now we have these two variables. Um, so the one thing that has changed from our previous function is now we can't explicitly just change the value of the array. Because if we do that, React's not going to know whether or not that value has changed. It's not smart enough in order to see that. So in order to uh, actually tell React, hey, this variable changed, and I want you to reload my page in order to change whatever needs to be changed, um, you actually have to call a function, in this case, the toggle function that was passed with the use state, in order to uh, tell React, hey, reload the page, and change the value of the variable to this thing. Um, so inside of our method, um, originally, we were just saying the value of the variable directly. Now, what we want to do is uh, call our toggle function and tell it, hey, here's what the new value is. And the new value is going to be the opposite of the current value. And if we log it, it's going to do exactly the same thing. Um, and the rest of this can actually stay the same.
because ingredients opened is still just a variable that we can access in our code just like we were before. The only difference is now we have to call a function every time we want to change the value of that variable. So I uh, actually should remove that equal statement there because we're not sending it equal to anything anymore. We're just calling a function in order to change its value. Um, so now everything should be in place in order for our code to work. So when I hit collapse, you actually see, okay, same thing as before, it changed the value. Um, and now, whenever we click it, it's actually going to reload the page and load whatever it needs to load. In this case, it's going to change the CSS class that's being applied. And that's the magic of React, where instead of having to call a bunch of JavaScript functions in order to change what's on the page, it'll just check for whenever those variables change inside of your code and then do all the reloading for you. Um, so that's the basics of state management, where whenever you want to create a new value that uh, is going to uh, trigger a re-render of the page, you would use useState in order to create that state. Um, and you can use useState multiple times. If you have like multiple variables, you could do the same thing. Um, so that's all I really wanted to go over in this lesson. Um, next time, we'll go over an activity to actually sort of use state inside of a uh, real application um, so that you can get a better feel for how to actually use it.